no big wow. So I think Tesla is about, um, from the chemistry standpoint, probably five years ahead of everybody. And they're not standing still. They're going to be doing more. I just filled another uh, battery uh, video a mm -hmm. few minutes ago. So really, really. Awesome. I'll check it out when you post yeah. it. Um, so I guess my follow-up question will be like right now, a lot of other you know battery manufacturers are producing the 4684 Tesla, like Panasonic or CATL or many more. Would that hinder Tesla's future, you know, capacity or edges? I know, I know the the the, the uh, demand is through the roof, but um, in the long term perspective, could they be somewhere in the middle of the road? No, no, I don't think so. I think Tesla's going to be a leader no matter what. And mm -hmm. he said he wanted to get twenty million vehicles on the road by 2030 or something like that. 2030. I truly believe that he'll do that. And the reason for that is because he has the money to dump into CapEx, like invest in, in more factories, more plants mm -hmm. um, and, and higher volumes and whatnot. To do that, to make a battery factory takes a long time. It takes a, a long time to, to do these presses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But a battery plant takes even longer. So. Uh, he he's smart in 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 getting people that uh, that he knows will be able to give him what he's want, looking for. So at Cattell, I mean they they're huge. They're the biggest battery plant I think in the world. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. So he can get pl plenty of plenty of uh, batteries out of there. And then uh, Panasonic has been his partner for a long, long time. So he'll get. What he's always got which is he's first in line mm -hmm. and then you look at that's only for lithium ion that's only for the 4680 and the 2170 but then he's also got uh, people um, feeding him the uh, lfp that lithium iron phosphate batteries all these different batteries he needs as many as he can get it's one thing to sh shove a car out the door it's quite another to make sure that you've got the power to to run the car and it takes longer to make battery packs than it does to make a car, a, a lot longer. So, um, so he has um, he has a good strategy. I think he's going to do just fine. Do you think it's a good idea for Tesla to enter in like mining or refinery business yes. in the future? Definitely. Yes, I think uh, I think that if he doesn't do that, he could wind up being slave to um, Chinese sources, Australian sources. Uh, European sources and uh, and of course everybody's a slave to uh, to the guys in uh, the Congo um, and really <laughs> and truly if we could that'd be the first thing I'd get rid of I would be looking to get rid of uh, cobalt as fast as I possibly could they use children to get that stuff out of the mines mm -hmm. it's unhealthy kind of an environment so it's totally mm -hmm. totally wrong Totally wrong. Cool. Uh, one question about Tesla Q and A. Um, their product hasn't been perfect, as we all know. Um, is it because of speed of production? And do you think when do you think Tesla is going to focus on that problem and get that resolved? Okay. So when you when you talk about uh, the old days, um, yes, Tesla had a lot of problems. Their paint sucked. Their build quality was terrible. Their stamping processes somebody should have been executed for. They missed welds. They didn't do a good job with, um, with material mix and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, when I did uh, an interview with, um, with um, Elon Musk over the phone, mm -hmm. um, I told him what I saw in the, um, in the body build. And he said, I fired that guy. Okay, well, that was a good, a nice first start. But then we did our video and I said, look at this, 120 parts. This should be one part. And what did he do? He went out and figured out how to make it one part. I mean, this guy takes suggestions. You know how many times I brought people by um, in our fact, we have a 15, we've had a product sitting on our floor for 15 years. Mm -hmm. It was a company that came out of Canada. They're now owned by the Chinese. And I believe all the technology has gone over there. 15 years, I couldn't get anybody in Europe or North America or Japan 
to even think about looking at it or considering it. And then, and then Elon Musk hears me make an offhanded comment, it should only be one part, and he comes out with a one-piece casting. I, that's the difference between, that's the difference between, well, we've just got to suck it up and, um, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll fix it when we can. And somebody that says, hey, we're never doing that again, and goes out and, and comes up with a brand new press. Nobody ever heard of a 9,000 ton press. Mm -hmm. Brand new press, brand new way of making dies. Those they're called puzzle dies. You just not everybody can make them. They're they're really really difficult to make. And then he goes and he's, um, uh, you know, he, and then he goes in and he designs his own material. That aluminum is basically squirted into those molds in less than a second. Mm -hmm. Less than one second, you fill up this giant mold, right? Uh, that shouldn't happen. Normally, aluminum, even if it's in a, it's a super heated, sorry, super molten state, I couldn't, I couldn't make that happen. But he did, and the reason for that was because he did. He invented a new material, science, a new material, a new aluminum, to make that thing work. That's the difference between a genius and a, a stumble bum that's got an MBA. Sorry, that's uh, that's the way it goes. And I've seen way too many automotive executives that have no clue what's going on, none. But, but they've, they're in a position of authority and they know that if they say no, then it's okay. And then, you know, as long as you don't do anything, your job's assured and so is your promotion in the company. That's the yeah. way it goes. Why is trying to keep the job? Why is trying to change the world? So that's all yeah, the difference. Exactly. Yeah. Totally different mindset, yeah. Uh, any comments on third-party service shop and then how that will impact the future of EV? Third-party service job as in somebody who can fix a car. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of guys out there right now that are fixing Teslas. Mm -hmm. Some cars are not so easy to fix, uh, but if you have um, an older uh, Roadster or if you have... Um, an old uh, Model 3, Model S, Model Y. Uh, there's guys, at least in the United States, that will help you out. I can't think of the guy's name right now, but I have a hard time with names. What's the name of that guy in, in California that uh, his last name starts with a G? Uh, Gruber? Gruber, yeah. Joe Gruber. He, he's a great guy. He's, mm -hmm. he's fixing people's cars for, you know, thousand two thousand bucks and tesla is saying well you need a whole new battery that'll be fifteen thousand dollars please and and he's doing it for next to nothing because mm -hmm. he's figured out how to what went wrong and how they can fix it and i talked to a whole bunch of guys in um in europe that that can do the same things now i will tell you the battery pack the sealed battery pack that we have here that's in the model y you are definitely that one is not going to be fixable zero but it's made so robustly, I don't think it will ever need to be fixed. This will be a product that is going to last for a million years. Um, it's, wow. uh, it's got great big, instead of little teeny tiny wires that are well bonded together, this has got a bus bar that's dropped on, on top of the batteries. And then and then it's got a, a huge um, spot weld. And that's the way to go. I mean, that, that's, that's perfect. So I think that uh, the, this battery here won't need to be fixed. Whereas the other ones, if you lose too many of those little teeny tiny wires, then things don't work the way they're supposed to. So, so a follow up on that. Do you think Tesla, uh, you said the battery can last like literally forever. Do you think getting into the battery recycle business is a bad idea? Battery recycling is going to be needed and necessary. And um, Elon Musk uh, said on, I think it was the last shareholders report mm -hmm. that they uh, they're recycling Already started. approximately yeah it, they 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 have they they're doing about fifty battery packs um, fifty oh. battery packs a week or a month I can't remember mm -hmm. but um, but literally uh, there's a lot of guys that are ready to go. Everybody knows how to do it. Um, 
and it's not too costly to get into that business. Mm -hmm. But the problem is there's no there's no revenue because battery packs aren't dying as quickly as what, again, reporters and analysts have said. All right. Oh yeah, I'm an analyst. Whoa, I'm a reporter. It's all baloney. It's all crap. This is just to scare people into staying with um, staying with their big V8. That's, it's the way it goes sometimes. All yeah. right. Uh, two last question, and we're off for yeah. today. You can just say whatever you want. It's open-minded question. Uh, what yeah. would you think will be the next innovation that changed the world, and uh, who would make them come true? That's from our subscriber. Okay, so um, we always think right now in a two-dimensional plane, right? Mm -hmm. um, we can go that way or we can go this way. We can go up a mountain, but that's not three-dimensional. I believe that what we need is the three dimension, the third dimension. So I'm a big fan on VTOLs, vertical takeoff machines. So if we want to look at what's the next big thing, it's going to be VTOLs. And, um, and I believe that those VTOLs, they're right on the ragged edge of something that maybe I'd want to have a, um, maybe I'd want to have a fuel cell in. Um, they still need batteries. But the trade-off between the batteries and the weight of the um, of the fuel cells, that's going to be that's going to be something that everybody's going to have to think of. But I've seen lots of designs that I know will work because we work. I mean, everybody knows about cars, but we've worked on lots and lots and lots of aircraft. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the seven eight seven is a good example. We we worked on that from. The first pencil sketch there was five people on that program myself and dan mccarthy one of my guys were two of them the other three guys were were boeing guys so we were from pencil sketches until first flight and then later on we worked on the factory floor trying to get you know all the processes and whatnot the bugs ironed out so i think that i think that from what i've seen of the different vertical takeoff machines there's a lot going on and by the way when I was in China, the last day that I was in China mm -hmm. in 2019, they put me up in this fabulous hotel. Uh, I mean, people who have never been to China, they don't have a clue. I mean, Shanghai is what New York wishes it was. Wow. If you haven't been to Shanghai, I mean, you haven't been anywhere. And, and anyway, I'm in this great big giant hotel, I can't remember the name of, and um, and I'm on, I'm high, uh, I don't know, 100 floors up or something like that. <clears throat> and I'm looking out the window. They gave me a corner thing. So, and it's all glass. So I'm standing there and I'm looking out toward the bung and um, the, the river. And so all of a sudden I hear this noise and I don't know what it is. I never heard anything like it. And the windows are vibrating. And I turned around and looked out the other window and there's two VTOLs, one, right beside each other, right there. And the two guys are waving at me. They were Wait, apparently in the, VTOL? in the audience, their vertical takeoff machines. There's Whoa. lots of drones and VTOLs that are flying around in China already. And, and I mean, people are talking, well, you know, we gotta watch about this. And I, China didn't care about that. China is looking at how do I get to where I wanna get to, which is kind of like world domination for transportation. And that's wow. the way you do it. And by the way, the two of them were there, then they took off and another guy stopped and then he took off. There was a total of three, three guys. <laughs> Wait, so you're, you're at a hundred floor <laughs> and then they are yeah. in the veto and they're waving at you? <laughs> yeah, two of them That's waved crazy. at me and that blew my mind. And then they took off and then the other guy came, he stopped for a minute and then he took off after them. That, wow. that shows you. I haven't seen that. So, we we talk about Tesla being farther ahead at certain things. I think uh, I think China is way ahead when it comes to VTOLs, way ahead and drones. I mean, I saw the drone um, <laughs> configuration that, that that they had at the Tesla. They call it swarming, and uh, I saw that um, at the cyber uh, the rodeo. Truck rodeo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I saw uh, I, when I was in. Um, What's the name of that place? Um, Mydia. I was in uh, Mydia in Guangzhou. And um, 
and outside my bedroom window, they were they were going to build a great big giant huge factory or something, and a bunch of guys with VTOLs came out, or not VTOLs, but drones came out, mm -hmm. and they had them all programmed, and they turned into uh, a man and a woman, and then they started dancing. Oh, <laughs> blow my mind. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And now that it's that's really and truly the first time I ever saw anything like that. And they had maybe, I don't know, dozen, half a dozen, dozen, maybe more. It was more than maybe 20. I don't know. But but quite a few people. And there was a lot of computers and whatnot mm -hmm. uh, to generate all this crap. But I'm telling you, when they first turned into a man and a woman, and then it was like old fashioned women with big dresses and whatnot. And then they started dancing around. Now, wow. I couldn't hear it, but they said the guys that were basically, I was, I was getting dressed to go to the bar downstairs and, um, and we were all going to go out. The guys who were in the bar downstairs, they were outside on the, what do you call it, sidewalk. And, um, and they said there was music that went along and these Rhythm. people are dancing and getting swinging around to some kind of 1940s song or something. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in China. Yeah, thanks for saying on such things, especially to our Chinese uh, audience. Uh, one last question of the day. Um, my subscribers were wondering, how do you keep uh, looking so young at your age? <laughs> <laughs> how do I keep looking so young? What do you think? <laughs> What's the makeup? I mean, every day I get... I have no idea. No, I... Uh, I... I, I don't think I look young. I, I think I look my age. What do you think, Eric? Yeah, he thinks I look old too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he nodded his head. I don't know. I, um, I don't eat right. I did when I was in China. I love Chinese food. I, and there's no Chinese restaurant that's worth a damn anywhere near where we live. Now, mm -hmm. if I go to Windsor, if I go to Canada, a lot of people immigrated um, from uh, from Canton, or what they used to call Canton. They immigrated to Windsor, and I can get food that tastes as good as anything that you'll find in Hong Kong. I love mm -hmm. going over there, and uh, but uh, for some reason or other, in our neighborhood here, uh, Chinese food is just not done, not, not happening. You want some. Mexican food, you're in, but uh, but no uh, pizza, Mexican food, that's it. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, when I when I was in China, I really looked good. My weight was down. I walked a lot, so um, my uh, my core was. <laughs> I I mean, I was just a lot better. Um, really. Uh, but now, uh, mostly, mostly I drive from place to place. I eat badly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe. How badly I eat. So it's nothing to do with food. And I drink a lot. So I don't know. It's, uh, I just got lucky. Jeans, I guess. It's, it's all down to jeans. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I thought you were going to say something like mindset or meditation or whatever, but no, nope, sorry. I, I got you. <laughs> no, that shit. <laughs> no. no, I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm not a Zen guy. No, none of that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. All right. It's been great pleasure having you here and thank you for sharing so much insightful thoughts about Tesla, EV or product engineering and even all the observation from China and the Chinese company. Uh, really enjoy the conversation and I really hope we can invite you back to talk more in the future and hopefully you can learn some Chinese next time. <laughs> yeah. Xie xie, xie xie. Xie xie. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I'll help you out whenever I can, whenever you want, Alan. No problem. Thank so you okay. so much. Such a all great right. pleasure and honor. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So honor is all mine. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll stop recording right now. <laughs>